so today we are going to set up a NAS server using old hardware for my home network using NAS for free and try to configure it so NAS for free is an open source distribution which is based on FreeBSD and an earlier version of FreeNAS hardware requirements of NAS for free is low it requires a minimum of 1 GB of RAM but 4 GB is the absolute minimum if we plan to use the ZFS file system now we move on to the download page where we can download either an ISO or an .img file format if we download the ISO file we just need to burn it into a CD-ROM or if we download the .img file we will need a software like Win32 Disk Imager for Windows where we just need to browse to the folder where the image is located select the device the USB drive where we want to write it and just click over write this is going to be my test machine it has an old ASRock socket 775 motherboard with Intel dual core 2 gigahertz processor and 2 gigs of RAM for storage I have two old hard drives for test purpose I will be booting from a pen drive through a cable attached to the motherboard so let's go and boot the computer so this is how it's going to look after booting from the pen drive over here it is saying that the LAN IP address is 192.168.1.250. This is the web GUI address. Here is the console menu. And these are the options where you can configure the LAN interface on the IP address. So this is how we are going to install the operating system from the live USB so we have to enter 9 and press enter and follow the instructions to install it into another USB drive or a hard drive now that our server is up and running and connected to the local network I now open a browser in another computer connected to the same network and in the address bar I type in the IP address of the server which was 192.168.1.250 and we are greeted with a default login screen where I enter the username as admin and the default password as NAS for free and click on login we are now logged into the server so this is the default home page of the server where we can find various informations about the server like the uptime CPU temperature the memory uses over here we also find that no disks has been configured so now we go to disks and click on management now we click on clear config and import disks so this will scan for all the disks available here we can now see that there is a 2 megabyte flash drive from where we have 
booted the system it has also detected a hard drive so now we go on to say apply changes and proceed to format the hard drive first we select the file system to format and click over the disk that we need to format so this is the disk that we are going to format click over next we can give a volume label such as CS disk 1 and say next and say format so now it has formatted the disk we click for OK and then go to access users and groups now we will add a group so we click over this add group sign we give a group say as group name as storehouse we can give a description say my storehouse and click over add and click over apply changes then we need to add users so we click over add user we give a name say storehouse my storehouse say as the full name then we give a password then we need to add the primary group so we, we will choose the primary group as storehouse we can then choose an additional group any additional group we keep the home directory as it is for the moment and click over add and apply changes now <coughs> we go to disks go to mount point and we will as add the disk so this was the disk that we need to mount now we need to add the partition number we give a mount point name as a say a storehouse any description you can give we need to give the owner enter the owner as storehouse group also we add it as storehouse so we can now click over a chain and change the access restrictions for others we can decheck the checkbox let keep it checked on for the moment and click over add and then apply changes we again go to access users and groups and modify the user so this is where we have to click edit user and now add the home directory so this was the home direct directory mount storehouse and click OK so the home di directory has now been selected and now we click over save and apply changes we now go to services and add a service see this common file system service we need to add go to shares and click over the add share we give in name say a storehouse we comment it says yes. we 
okay keep it as local backup and enter the path mount storehouse we keep the others check as it is for the moment and click on add apply changes go to settings and click over enable go below and click over save and restart we can now go to our home page of the server over here here we can now see that the disk has been configured now if everything has been configured properly we should be able to view the server through any computer that is connected to the local network so from this windows computer we now have detected the NAS for free server we can click over it so we can now see the storehouse and we are free to use it as if it is a local hard drive we can create folders we can transfer files into it 